number two. Praise the Lord. I want to relate my question to consistent Christian living. I have many friends who are, you know, believers. And before they came here, they changed their age. And while coming here, some of them are pastors. They have had a battle institution, but they try to cover that area. Well, my question is, if they die, will they make it to heaven? Then that they turn lies in their age and they don't want to change it. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you. God bless you. Um, we give God the glory for all that we are hearing from our brethren today. Very important question. As for the uh, first question, we are our sister read to us um, in Genesis 19, 27, uh, 26, and his wife looked back, she became a pillar of salt. And the question of our sister and the concern of our sister is, there's a very wide gap between the husband and the wife. And even though she made reference to husband and wife, I want to say most in the Bible days, you see it on both sides. Sometimes it's the husband that is way up and the wife is way down. And at other times, the wife is way up, the husband is way down. It happens in both cases as well. But as for the particular question of our sister, I want to let us know that this is not the first time we'll see such a thing in the scriptures. If you uh, look at Job chapter 1, you'll see the same thing happen as well. The gap was very wide between the husband and the wife. Praise the Lord. While God testified of Job in verse chapter 1 verse 8, and I have been reading that scriptures, but I probably didn't see this part. He said, there is none like him in the earth. Praise the Lord. And I thought deeply about that. There is none like him in the earth. And then you look at the wife on the other end. Cross God and die. Are you still holding your integrity? Cross God and die. I can't imagine you decaying right before. Cross God and die. Praise the Lord. So we see that happen in the case of Job. We see that happen in the case of uh, even uh, David, praise the Lord. When Michael, the, the daughter of Saul, you know, you know, uh, talked against him. And we see that again repeating itself over and over in many other places. I think one thing that tells us is that you might be married to a husband or a wife that is up there. Don't think that if he makes it, you will also make it. Praise the Lord. Another lesson that we, might, we can also learn from there is that you cannot give excuse and say it's because of my wife that I couldn't make it. It's because of my husband that I couldn't make it. I see it throughout the Bible that people that are greatest in the sight of God, they have, they have the worst wives. Praise the Lord. I've seen that happen again and again in the Bible. Amen? So, one thing you have to know about this, my sister, is that when we become adults, even when you are, you know, you, you reach certain age, um, you become somebody that can make decisions for yourself. Am I right? They say you can take the horse to the stream. Can you force the horse to drink? Praise the Lord. It does not mean the husband doesn't talk sometimes. It doesn't mean the wife probably doesn't say, you know, my husband, why do you do this? But you know what? You cannot force him. You understand? You cannot force her. If you tell her, this is the Christian way, and she doesn't want to do it, it doesn't stop Job. Job will still hold on to his integrity. Wife, let's go on. If wife doesn't go, he still holds on to integrity. The same thing with Lot. Why? Let's go. She's been following all along. All she's been doing is playing church. She just goes to the husband with church. A time came when the truth will be tested. Amen. 
And when that truth was tested, now we know that all along Job was, I mean, Lot was what? Let me use the word, forcing her. Praise the Lord. And the man says, well, marriage is between one. I can't cast her away, so let's go. God, you can fix her. Pray, pray, pray for her. And uh, when the time comes to the test, what happened? The truth came out. Amen. Did she make it? She did not make it. She's an adult. The man must have been talking to her. Praise the Lord. Amen. As unto all the other children. But I'm sure that, like in the case of Job, he must have been praying and praying. And that is what husband should do, wife should do. If your husband is the one that is all out there and you are talking, he doesn't listen, pray. Amen. Otherwise, he will get to the point he will fight you and he box you. So he prayed and doing what you need to do. Maybe before he becomes a killer of salt, he will truly repent. And if he doesn't, and he wants to become, die of hypertension like neighbor, good for him. That woman has been talking to that man. Man, this thing is all you do is you go party and all this. Give your life to Christ. I have all the money, let me enjoy myself. And that man enjoyed himself. And the woman was righteous. Praise the Lord. The woman followed the Lord. And she did all she could do, you know, even went to defend the, the family. That man, David, don't worry. God will reward you one day. She didn't even tell the husband when she went to save the husband. That tells you in the secret what she must be doing. She didn't tell the husband to bring for the husband, bring for the husband. But the time came when God will test you out. Did God test him out? He tested him. Was he found? He was found wanting and died of hypertension. Also his heart froze within him and the man died. So my answer to you is let's keep on praying and doing the much we can do. When people become adults, they have their own mind. Even your children that are adults, they have their own mind. You might be way up there, your children might be way out there. You tried all your best and you couldn't. Talk to them and keep praying for them. The day is coming, uh, maybe they will listen and they will return to the Lord. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Is, does that answer your question? Um, the second one uh, regards, um, I think that goes to the core of our story today, consistent Christian living. When you were coming here to the U.S., so many things you feel on the phone. You know, I am just 18 years old, and meanwhile you are 38. Praise the Lord. I mean, how much you subtract from it? Amen. And some of us, our faces look so good. If you say you are 18, they will believe you. Praise the Lord. Amen. But you can do that to get earthly thing. You can do that to get the visa. You can do that to come to the U.S. But you need to repent of it. I think it is very straightforward. If you don't repent of it, and you eventually... The time comes for you to be tested. The time comes that maybe you need to see the Lord and you did not repent of your sin, you will perish. Praise the Lord. Whoever does that has what? Backsliding. Like I said, it goes to the core of what we are going to do. That's backsliding for you to lie. And you are talking of, uh, you know, at the embassy and all that, but beyond the embassy, we still do it today. Am I right? You go to work. You report by 9 o'clock. What do you feel there? 8.35. Praise the Lord. What's the difference between that and the person that says he's 18 years old? What's the difference? What is the difference? There is no difference. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. Or the one that, uh, you know, uh, lied on his tax something, What's the difference between the one that says he's 18 at the embassy and the one that, uh, you know, lied before IRS? Um, I have five children. 
and uh, you cook up the rest three. You actually have two, and you cook up the rest three. And all kinds of things that people do, the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. And the truth about that is that the Lord is calling us that whatsoever will make us to backslide, to be inconsistent, to be brave dipping and dabbing that we should come out of it in Jesus' name. The Bible said, if you continue in my word, and then the Lord told uh, Abraham in Genesis 17, walk before me and be ye perfect. Like our teacher told us, there was, you know, this record of inconsistency with him. It's in and out and in and out, and God said, now, time up. You need to sit up. And I think that is the call that is calling to all of us today. Whether you do it at the embassy, you do it at the IRS, or you did it in, in your job, walk before me and be perfect. Let's avoid all this inconsistency. And the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Let's rise up to pray. The call that came to Abraham is coming to you today. Walk before me and be ye holy. Walk before me and be ye holy. That's what he's saying. Let's pray to the Lord. It takes the grace of God. It takes the grace of God. It is tough, but the Lord will help us. By special grace, we will live the life that pleases God. Talk to the Lord. Abraham did it, you can do it. Lot did it, you can do it. In Jesus' name we pray. Lord, we thank you and praise you for today. We worship and adore you. We give you all the glory and honor and power and majesty. We ask that you give us the grace, Lord, to walk before you and be perfect and be holy in Jesus' name. Lord, we know that it's tough out there, but your grace is even tougher. And Lord, you will help us, Lord, to please you all the days of our pilgrimage here on earth. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen.